Snacks, man. Snacks are a drag. Snacks are a curse to society. Snacks are a curse to America. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something. I eat really well. I eat good food. I, I like good food. I like to eat healthy food. I don't like to eat processed food, but I'm mad at myself. I don't like the way I eat because of one thing. I eat snacks. I hate myself for eating snacks. What happened was I was a bodybuilder in the 1980s and I was at the gym and the problem with going to gyms is you get a bunch of Tom, Dick and Harry's who think they're know-it-alls and they always got advice and, and you know people whispering in your ear all the time when you work out. I remember there was this common wisdom at the gym. You need to eat six small meals a day. You'll assimilate more protein. So, hey man, I'm a natural glutton. Someone's giving me the green light to eat six meals a day, which means, you know, three meals and three snacks. I'm on it. So, since the early 1980s, since I was in my late teens, I've been snacking. And what happens is now I'm hungry every three hours. My body's acclimated to it. The studies show that when you eat snacks, you eat more calories. It makes sense. And, you know, this is no accident. The snack industry figured this out in the early 1980s. We're going to have snackables, snack wells, and we're going to give Americans these highly processed, highly packaged snacks that are very high profit for us. And America became a, uh, a country of snackers, and we're obsessed with snacks, so I think snacks have ruined America. You can see the snacking madness at the airport. So you go to the airport, you pass security, and the first thing you see after you pass security are snack shops. And not just snack shops, there's restaurants of course. You see people feeding their face before they get on the plane. So you, you then get on the plane. And what's the first uh, item of business? snacks. The airline attendant says, with great grandiloquence, we'll be having snacks. And then everyone gets obsessed. Oh my God, what's the snack going to be? What do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be a charcuterie board with Adriatic figs and Capri salami? I don't think so. It's going to be the same thing it was last time. Peanuts and maybe pretzels. That's what the snack's going to be. And so now that the snack has been announced, everyone now has snack anxiety. Did I miss the snack? Oh my God, I went to the bathroom. Did they pass out the snacks while I was in the bathroom? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I didn't get a snack. Or someone falls asleep, they wake up. Did I miss the snack? Yeah, you missed the snack. You didn't get a snack. And then you, um, you ask the airline attendant, can I have a snack? And she's like, Nurse Ratchet, no, you don't get a snack. You fell asleep. You don't get a snack. And then some other uh, airline passenger is bragging. I got two snacks. Unbelievable. Two snacks. What, what did you do? Did you just win a car at a game show? No one cares that you got two snacks. Shut up. And then people are arguing on the plane. I didn't get any snacks and you got two. And it, come on, you, you morons. Snacks, man. Snacks are a drag. Snacks are ruining America. And so we actually have science to back up my claim that snacks are ruining America. The first thing I want to explain to you about snacks. Your body was designed to eat like two or three times a day. You have this thing in your body called a pancreas. And Dr. Jason Fung, the author of the best-selling obesity code, he wants you to understand the pancreas. The pancreas creates a hormone called insulin. And you need to give your pancreas some rest. And you give it rest by not snacking. You eat three meals a day. And by not snacking, you modulate the amount of uh, insulin levels. Insulin is something you need to know about if you're interested in weight management, as I am. Insulin affects your appetite. It affects your metabolism. It affects your uh, weight management. If you're constantly eating, snacking, as Dr. Jason Fung writes, you're constantly stimulating your pancreas. And what this results in, according to Dr. Jason Fung and the science, 
is insulin insensitivity. This results in increased appetite, slow down metabolism, obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, etc. Snacking is a bad thing. Now, Dr. Jason Fung says something that fascinates me in his book. He says, I want you to look at photographs all over the world pre-1980. If you look at photographs all over the world in the 1970s, China, Japan, America, wherever, people are not fat. And he says, hey, in China, they eat white rice, 300 grams of carbohydrates of white rice a day, and people aren't fat. In Japan, go to Okinawa, people are eating like 300 carbohydrates of uh, sweet potatoes a day. No one's fat. In America, I remember this, in the 1960s, we would eat tacos and chili and spaghetti and garlic bread and pie and big hoagie sandwiches, and we weren't fat. And the thing is, he says, we weren't a snacking culture at that time. Snacking elevates your hormone levels, insulin levels. And he argues quite persuasively that fat is not about calories, it's not about carbohydrates, it's about that fat hormone in your body, insulin. So I would love to stop snacking for that reason alone. But there are other reasons why we shouldn't snack. And I, I, I really get down on myself. The second reason we got to stop snacking, it takes away our toughness. Who do you, what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who eats three meals a day and when you're not eating, you're just, you're busy with your life? You just, you're just, be, you're getting stuff done, man. You're taking care of business, you know? You're, you're just taking care of business. Or do you want to be the person who's constantly worried about what's your next snack? I can't, I can't do this. I have to have a snack. I can't read. I can't work out. I haven't had my snack. I, snacking is the equivalent of putting a pacifier in a baby's mouth. Snacking is all about the infantilization of America. It takes away toughness. Here's a third reason why I'm against snacks. They take away the appreciation and preparation of a real meal. A real meal is when we we prepare something that's delicious and healthy and we sit down with our family, our friends. It's a social and cultural event. That's gone. Now we have snacking. We're, we're our stuffing our mouths like we're zombies and it's joyless. And that brings me to my final point about snacking. When you eat all the time, you don't really enjoy food. It just becomes a mindless habit and you become a zombie. Uh, notice how much you'll enjoy food more if you stop snacking. If you eat three meals a day, you're going to enjoy your food a lot. So here I am, man. I'm, I'm preaching with all my heart, mind, and soul against snacking. And here's the challenge for me and for you. Could you stop snacking? I don't know if I could. I've been snacking since the 1980s, and my body is used to eating every three hours. I, would, I, I need to reboot, man. I need a reboot. i got to figure it out. Uh, I have cut back on my snacking about, I don't know, 80%, but I still like to eat an apple at night after I get my uh, twin daughters to bed. I would, I would love to get rid of that. Just as a principle, I would love to be the dude who eats three meals a day, man. That would be like, I'd be the conquering hero. So tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Are you a slave to snacks? Are you obsessed with snacks? Do you snack more than you want to? Than you want to? Could you take the no snack challenge? That would, that would make you so tough. I guarantee your life would change for the better if you could stop eating snacks. Snacks ruin America. I really believe that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. Until next time, I'm out.